in 1968 where Eagles Dare hit the big screen. The action film was directed by Brian Hutton, and it starred Richard Burton, Clint Eastwood, and Mary Urie. The movie is a high-powered, big-budget World War II espionage thriller, and it follows a group of elite commandos led by John Smith, played by Richard Burton, that are assigned to rescue an American general being held captive by the Nazis in a high castle in the Bavarian Alps. He's assisted by the young American lieutenant, Morris Schaefer, played by Clint Eastwood. Aided also by his crew of six, they don German uniforms and they parachute into enemy territory. The excitement in this picture is through the roof. Major contributions were done by Hollywood stuntman Yakima Canute, who was a second unit director, and he shot most of the action scenes that were done in the movie. British stuntman Alf Joint doubled for Burton in a number of the sequences as they fight on top of the cable car. The movie set a first in the fact that it was one of the very first films to use front projection as an effect. This technology enabled the filming of the scenes where the actors were on top of the cable car. Burton and Eastwood dubbed the film due to the amount of screen time which stand-ins doubled for the cast in the bulk of the action sequences. The start of primary filming began January 2, 1968 in Austria, and it concluded in July of 1968. Eastwood received $800,000, and Burton received $1.2 million. Alastair McLean wrote the screenplay. This was his first, and he did this at the same time that he wrote the novel of the same name. They both went on to become commercial successes. Initially, Eastwood hated the script. He thought McLean did a terrible job with it. After reading it, he requested that he be given less dialogue. Most of his lines were given to Richard Burton, while Eastwood handled most of the action scenes. Eastwood ended up taking this film on the advice of his agent, who wanted him to be in a film with somebody of seniority in Hollywood. Eastwood and Burton got along great on the set, and the director, Hutton, played to the actor's strengths, allowing for Burton's theatrical background to help his character of Smith and for Eastwood's quiet demeanor to establish him as Schaefer. The driving force for the origins of this movie were Richard Burton's stepson, who wanted to see his stepfather in a good old-fashioned adventure movie. Burton went on to approach producer Elliot Kastner for some ideas, and that led to Alistair McLean writing the screenplay. McLean delivered the script to Kastner in just six weeks. The part that Clint Eastwood played of Morris Schaefer was offered to Lee Marvin, but he declined it. He told the producers that he had already starred in a World War II action adventure, and that was The Dirty Dozen, and he absolutely hated that movie. Although it made him a huge star, He didn't want to return to that style of movie at all. In the scenes where Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood climb the steep fortress walls, Burton moves through this with ease. While you can see Eastwood clearly struggling, and it's hard for him physically to do this. This was due to the fact that Burton, who is a hard and heavy drinker and a chain smoker, and also out of shape at the time, chose to ride a crane, made invisible by special effects, but the health-conscious Eastwood was actually climbing the wall. At the time of the filming, Burton was suffering from bursitis and arthritis, and you tack on him being portly and turning up the bottle quite a bit, they had to do something to help him up these walls. The filming ran into countless delays, some of them due to weather, some of them due to Richard Burton just disappearing because of his drinking habits. He would disappear for days on end with his friends Peter O'Toole and Richard Harris. It would completely shut down production. The weather in Austria also delayed things, 
because they had to contend with blizzards, sub-zero temperatures, and potential avalanches. As part of a special deal with MGM, Clint Eastwood was able to take delivery of a Norton P11 motorcycle, which he got out and tested at a racetrack not far away, at the same time being accompanied by his co-star Ingrid Pitt. This was something that the studio had forbidden them to do because of the fear of injury or death that this might influence the insurance coverage that was on the film. Richard Burton just didn't like doing war movies, and he probably wouldn't have done this movie, but he just needed a box office hit. He had been struggling with films as of late. His past two productions were just terrible at the box office. After he finished the film, he hated it. He thought it was a terrible film. This guy was a lifelong socialist and had strong anti-war views. At one time in November of 1974, he was banned by the BBC for writing two articles that attacked Winston Churchill. Three of the main characters in the film have somewhat bizarre contradictions. Ingrid Pitt had some Jewish heritage and a German father of Russian origins. Darren Nesbitt was Jewish, although he played a Gestapo officer. Anton Differing was German, Jewish, and gay. Ferdy Maine was also a German Jew, but came to England in the 1930s to escape Nazism. It's pretty understandable how some of these actors might have had issues with seeing the German uniforms. Shortly after this movie was filmed, Richard Burton accidentally disabled his older brother, I-4 Jenkins, by throwing him on the floor after they had had an all-day drinking session. I-4 remained paralyzed and bedridden until his death several years later. All of this continued as Richard Burton decided to take a downhill spiral and became completely consumed by his obsession for drinking. While they were on location in Austria, Richard Burton was drinking in the hotel bar with Elizabeth Taylor and Clint Eastwood and other members of the crew when in walks what some say was a jealous husband. You got to realize Richard Burton was notorious for chasing anything that had a skirt on. And you might say the same thing for Clint Eastwood. But this crazed maniac came up and pressed a gun against the stomach of Richard Burton. Burton sat there and taunted him to go ahead and pull the trigger. Elizabeth Taylor had already gone to bed when the incident had happened, and she heard the ruckus in the lobby and yelled down to Burton to lower his voice. Then she realized what was happening, and she walked directly into this mess. After this continued on for a period of time, with everybody scared to death except for Burton, the man holding the gun said that he needed to go to the restroom. So he left. As soon as he did, all of the stars got out of there as quickly as they could. I don't think any of this was reported to the police, I can't find any mention that the authorities were ever called. But there's a bunch of first-hand witnesses that actually saw it happen. Had Burton not been so drunk, he would have probably been scared to death. The movie received a royal premiere on January 22, 1969, with Princess Alexandra in attendance. Of the stars of the film, only Clint Eastwood was not present as he was filming Two Mules for Sister Sarah in Mexico. Where Eagles Dare was a huge success, earning $6.5 million at the North American box office in its first year of release. Although the critics found the plot somewhat confusing, reviews of the film were generally positive, and they loved the action scenes and the cinematography. Take a look back at this action classic you'll end up loving it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.